Time for another episode of the Josh Cast. Starting my day late, not liking it. Set my alarm for 726. Slept in until 8. I said you deserve it. But the other part of me said you're slacking off, Snyder. You're slacking off. Which voice in my head is the right voice? Perhaps it's the third voice that says, I feel like poop, 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 I feel like poop today. I feel like poop today. I feel like poop today, 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 not yesterday, not tomorrow, today. Ah, at last I found my inner child. So, what's this, what's the topic today? What are we discussing today? You know, I'm a little concerned whenever I hear people talk about infrastructure. I'm saying that because I'm about to drive under a bridge. And lately all I've been hearing is, well, you know, half the bridges in the United States aren't up to code. And uh, kind of reminds me of uh, Rome falling. Ha <laughs> ha! That always bothers me when I'm about to drive under or uh, on a bridge. I'm wondering, uh, which one of the bridges is this? Uh, I feel like we should fix those bridges. I think that's, I think that's a solid move. I think that's a nonpartisan issue. Doesn't matter where your politics align. Uh, My guess is in uh, the two camps, camp number one is when I drive over the bridge, the bridge doesn't collapse. And camp number two is when I drive over the bridge, uh, I fall to my death. I'm guessing that whether you're a Republican, Democrat, or an Independent, you're going to fall in camp number one. And if you're falling in camp number two, you need to call a friend. Get some help. I just I don't know. It it seems uh, it seems obvious to me. But what do I know? What do I know? Indeed. I watched a special on black holes. And scientists are saying that they don't, they still really don't know what's inside of a black hole, nor do they know exactly how the physics inside of a black hole works. And here's one thing I appreciate about myself. I'm sitting there watching that video and I say to myself, you know what? I think I could figure this out. Like suddenly I'm Stephen Hawking. I'm like, well, look, I mean, a black hole is a spiral, right? And spirals occur in nature, right? And like when you turn on the sink and the water goes down the sink, that's a spiral. So maybe all the black, the black hole is like a toilet, right? And there's a pipe that goes out to the ocean. And we just don't know where the ocean is. And the ocean is another dimension. So somewhere in another dimension, people are going, where's all this crap coming from? Somewhere in another dimension, someone is saying, Maximilian Shell? How did you get here? That joke, by the way, no one's going to get. No one will get what I just said. I was brilliant. It was brilliant. And no one will care. No one will care. Beyond no one will care. Robert Forster? What? How did you get here? We don't know what's coming through these black holes, but but we do know the actors coming through them. That's as far as our science can progress. Like I know what's going to come through a black hole, or what goes into a black hole. 
But there are moments where I have these attacks of super confidence. And perhaps that's a good thing. You know, perhaps with all my neuroses and my anxieties and my lack of confidence, perhaps it's nice occasionally to feel like I know what I'm talking about. But thankfully, my neuroses hear about this and they knock on the door and they go, hey, hey, what are you you thinking about? Let's slow that down, all right? B plus in AP physics, remember that? And only because you did extra credit. You remember not getting it in physics? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's where I kind of, that's where I fell apart, was in physics. Ooh, you know, it's funny, as I'm talking about this, uh, I find I'm ashamed to admit this. But I did, I had trouble in physics. I just, it was a year looking at the parabola. That's all I remember. The big bell curve. That's what, I didn't know a parabola is not a bell curve. I remember that. It's more like a, it's more like a bowl. If you turn it around, it's like a bowl that you would see in a supervillain's lair in the 80s. That's more what it is. And all year, we're talking about the parabola. Man, the parabola is a big deal in physics. The parabola is the Barbra Streisand of physics. People are into, physicists are into that parabola. I think the parabola was also in calculus. There's a lot of parabolas going along. All right, we get it. Parabolas. Teach us how to go faster than the speed of light. But you can't do according to the laws of relativity. So the solution is you move space in front of the ship and collapse the space behind the ship. Or you collapse the space in front of the ship and rebuild the space behind the ship. That's how you go faster than light. Because light can only travel as fast as space, something like that. So you change space. You need a ship that destroys space, which does not... I've talked about this on stage many years ago, but I will bring it up now. It doesn't sound particularly safe. I feel like... You know, I have faith that the human race, provided they survive the next two years, will evolve to the point where we can build a ship that collapses the space in front of it and rebuilds the space behind it. I have faith. I've got faith of the heart. Star Trek Enterprise. Down to two podcast listeners. But I have faith that we will be able to build that ship. And I have faith that that ship will be able to work. Unfortunately, by the time the ship works, when you're talking about something that destroys space, I think there's going to be a lot of broken space out there. I think we're going to lose Cleveland in this process. I hate to say it. Because I, yes, I believe in the human race, but I also know the human race. And uh, we got a lot of people that don't double check their work in the human race. A lot of people that don't quite get physics, who are in charge of the parabola, and uh, something goes wonky, and it becomes a bell curve, and no more space. And suddenly, uh, Half of Montana is just gone. That's one of my chief concerns. Business cards. I should get business cards.
I just uh, never feel worthy of business cards. I'd like to put that on my business card. I don't feel worthy of this card. Joshua Snyder, I feel the exact opposite as Patrick Bateman in American Psycho about business cards. Can that be the quote? Shouldn't even be a card. It should be just a bunch of ripped up papers. Drilling a hole in the street. They're drilling a hole in the street while they go around shooting skeet. I don't know what that means. Now I'm just trying to rhyme. Yeah, a huge sci-fi guy, not a big uh, fantasy guy. Science fiction's always appealed to me. Maybe, I think, because deep down, like in the realm of magic, it always seems like the character who's, you know, the hero has a gift. Harry Potter has a gift. He's just magical. Whereas in science fiction, the main character is someone who you know, using their brain has been able to, you know, uses their understanding of science to save the day. So technically, if I was writing myself as a character, I would be more effective in a fantasy than in science fiction. Because I'd be the character in the science fiction going, oh, you got a parabola? Uh Uh-oh. Yeesh. Listen, if it was a triangle, I I could help you. But parabola, that's where I kind of fall apart. What about a bell curve? I'm better with bell curves. So the fantasy of the science fiction is, I know what a parabola is. That's, now that's fantasy. I can't help but wonder if I went back to physics now, would I understand it better? Or would it be the same? uh, Like if I got a physics 101 book or an AP physics book and went through it, would I be able to get it? How much of it would I be able to pick up or would I just... um, not get it. Why do I have the... See, this is how much of a nerd I am. There's a part of me that's like, yeah, I really want to do that. Why the desire to do that, Josh? Well, understanding the universe through science is a form of exploration, which seems to derive from the same impulse that drives people to study spirituality or religion, and striving to understand how things work, to understand myself better. Although that's the case, shouldn't I be able to reverse engineer it? You know, if all of the universe is just a reflection of myself, and we don't know what happens when stuff goes into a black hole, I think I'm right. It's just a toilet. There's a giant black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. It's a giant toilet. And we are cosmic refuse. You know, I really think that tracks. Why was the universe created? The universe wasn't created. Somebody's trying to drain the universe. And we are the growth that occurred on the side of the bowl. Boy, that feel I the math on that feels 100% to me. We just happen to be part of a galaxy that just, you know, is maybe in a frat house and no one cleans it. That's my theory. And I'm sticking to it. 
But wasn't this a productive podcast? I think we really learned a lot today. But why the desire to know myself? Because it sure does seem like the people who don't know themselves, they just seem a lot happier to me. Maybe I shouldn't know myself. Or the universe. I've met myself. I don't know if I'm going to like the universe. The universe might be as desperate for hand sanitizer as I am. This could be a disaster. Maybe I should keep the universe at a respectable distance. Maybe both of us would appreciate that. All right, about to park. About to bring this podcast to a fantastic close. Should I end with a thought for the day? What's my thought for the day? What is my thought for the day? Coconut on a dessert. I'm, I'm not a fan of this. I am not a fan of this. I don't know who started this. Coconut cream pie, you know, the coconut on the donuts, the coconut Girl Scout cookies. Coconut, you know, like I, I respect the coconut. I get what the coconut's trying to do. I see what you're doing. Coconut's really trying. It's really trying to be a dessert, but it's just not quite there. There's an aftertaste that is too close to, I don't know, a snow pea or something. But it's just enough of an aftertaste that says, hey, I'm organic. I'm not sugar that's created in a lab that's perfect. So no, my answer to coconut is no. Thank you, but no thank you. My thought for the day.